And welcome back to For the Record, everybody. I'm Jesse Weber, and thanks for joining us. So I just got out of the courtroom right behind me as they went to an early lunch break, and it was an exciting morning being in that courtroom because clearly Johnny Depp will be able to proceed with his case, and now it's going to be Amber Heard's turn to present her evidence. Now, for all of our YouTube fans who've been watching, don't worry. As soon as the feed comes back in about 1.30 p.m. Eastern time, we will jump back live there. We don't want you to miss a moment of the courtroom feed, but for right now, now, we're going to break down some more of what's happened in court, but even better than that, we are taking your questions. So if you're on YouTube, just put a question, pin it to the channel, we'll read it on air, and we'll hopefully answer it and give you a little bit of insight into what is happening into this case. So I'm joined here once again by Linda and Dina. It's great to have you both here. Let's get to some questions. So Dina, I'm going to give you this question because it's from D. Dina, and D. Dina says, does this motion to strike reflect badly on Amber's team? And was the jury there or will they find out what occurred? Let me let me just tackle the last part. No, the jury was not present for that. They're not supposed to know anything about this motion to strike. Uh, they shouldn't read anything about the motion to strike. I will tell you real quick, Dina, that when I was in that courtroom and the judge said that uh, denying the motion for at least two of those statements, the third one will be kept under advisement, there were people in that courtroom who were clapping almost. They were like, yes, yes, they want this case to proceed. Clearly, they are Johnny Depp supporters. But, Dina, I'll give you, uh, I'll, I'll give you a chance to respond to this. For all of us watching, does it reflect badly on Amber Heard's team that they did not get this to be successful? You know, it shouldn't because it's actually a very high burden for them to have met, which is that looking at all the evidence as in fa as the most favorable light to Johnny Depp, can it still be dismissed? That's not the standard that the jury is going to look at when they actually reach a verdict. So it's it's good to understand that this motion is very hard for um, a defendant to ever win in a, in a trial because most likely when you've gotten to this point, you've got some s strong evidence on both sides. That's why you're in the trial to begin with. Yeah, and it was kind of like a, a, a mini closing arguments. You heard the best arguments from both sides about the the strength of the Johnny Depp's case or the weakness in Johnny Depp's case. And so that was a good question for D. Dina, for Dina, for our own Dina mm -hmm. Dahl. Uh, so Linda, let me ask you this. This is from Hannah Waitley. And again, anybody out there, if you have a question, go on our YouTube channel, pin it on there. We'll read it on air. We'll answer it. So Hannah Waitley asks, is it likely that Amber will be questioned on previous domestic disputes to show a pattern in behavior, meaning altercations with her ex-wife. This is obviously in reference to the idea that Amber Heard will take the stand uh, maybe later today, possibly tomorrow. Linda, I'll give you an, uh, uh, the opportunity to uh, respond to Hannah Waitley about what Amber Heard will be questioned about. Well, Hannah, that is just such an interesting question because we don't know what the judge's pretrial rulings may have been all the way, whether she's going to allow other counts of domestic violence to show a pattern and practice of somebody to show that is it more likely than not that therefore if she abused her prior domestic partner, she was also an abuser of Johnny Depp. Usually judges may not allow that in unless there is a door that is opened. Whether Amber Heard opens that door, I think that maybe the cross-examination of her may just open that door. So we're going to have to wait and see, which is why you have to watch the Long Crime Network. Absolutely. I mean, that'll be some interesting testimony. Now, Dina, we have a question from Al. Do we think this would have gone well for Depp had this trial not been public, meaning there were no cameras in the courtroom? Would his team's approach have changed? What do you think about that? Now, that's an interesting question, whether or not they did maybe pick some of their witnesses because they thought they would be relatable or not to the public. That's a little unclear. It, it would make sense that a celebrity and actor would have some say in maybe how that was going to be presented. But I think the really important thing is that the... the he, although he is doing this for both a public opinion, I really do believe he is trying to get a win here in court. So I believe that the focus of the lawyers was really what is going to appeal to the jury. Now, the jury is supposed to be a representation of his peers. So if something appeals to the jury, it should also likely appeal to the public. But I do think their focus was trying to win in front of those jurors. 
It's funny you say that because J. Benjamin Rottenborn during the, this motion hearing was basically, I don't know what who uh, Mr. Chu, if he was making that speech for the court or for everyone else listening. And I think that's an interesting perspective there. Now, Linda, we have about a minute, about 90 seconds. This is from Mac McDude. And he says, can Amber be charged with domestic violence as a result of the findings in this case? Well, Mr. McDude, it depends on what the criminal statutes are, and it seems to me that the criminal statutes may have expired. That's called the statute of limitations by now. And they would have to get cooperation from Johnny Depp. I don't know whether they'll do that, but could the police, if she is found to have abused Johnny Depp, and it's within a statute, could the police come back and now open an investigation? Absolutely, but it depends on the statute and when the last domestic violence incident was and how long the statute is. And you always want kind of that direct evidence. Uh, obviously, you can have a, uh, you know, a complaining witness. You could have Johnny Depp. But other than that, you know, it was really Travis McGivern who we heard testify yesterday to this kind of physical assault by uh, De Amber Heard against Johnny Depp, punching him in the head or throwing a Red Bull can. You know, a lot of these other th evidence we've seen has been, you know, bruises on Johnny Depp's face. How did it happen? You know, this is kind of a nebulous, uh, uh, kind of nebulous finding here. But it is an interesting question nonetheless. And we we are going to be taking more of your questions in the next uh, hour or so. So I'll tell you what, if you're on YouTube or jump on our YouTube, pin a question there. We'll answer it on air. We don't want you to have any confusion about the Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard case. So we'll take a very quick break. Stay with us here on Long Crime, and we'll be right back right after this.